Oh, so you two got a seat already, huh? You guys are waiting for Dr. Payam! <laughs> Professor Dill is also here. <laughs> Alright, thanks for coming. And by popular demand, I do one of my favorite math proofs. It's the proof of the cauchy schwartz inequality. And some people call it the cauchy schwartz bunyakovsky inequality, if you're into that. Uh, by the way, so Cauchy, very famous, very French, but Schwartz, he's actually German. So a lot of people confuse him with Laurent Schwartz. It's not the same guy. So they're two different guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so what does the Cauchy Schwartz inequality say? It's actually a very nice statement. It tells us that the dot product of two vectors, if you have two vectors u and v and you dot them, it can never be bigger than the product of their lengths. So the absolute value of the dot product, so this is a scalar, the absolute value of the scalar is always less than or equal to the product of the norms. And let me remind you, um, uv are two vectors in Rn, and the dot product is just, ah, here we go, <laughs> is the sum of the products of each component. So uivi, where again u is u1 up to un, v is v1 up to vn, and the length is just the square root, let's see, length of u is the square root of the sum of squares of the components. And by the way, the same proof I'll present to you will work uh, for any inner product space, at least any real inner product space. Okay. And so usually people prove this using projections and some weird nonsense, <laughs> maybe not nonsense, but some weird proof. But here I will present you a very, very nice proof based on discriminants, and you'll see why. And here's the proof, and it's based on the analysis book by Puke. So one of the proofs in there that I really like. And it goes basically uh, two or three steps. So step one is just based on this clever observation. Notice that no matter which real number t you have, the following dot product is always positive. If you take t u plus tv and dot it with itself, is always greater than or equal to zero. And that's one of the properties of the dot product, that if you have a vector and you dot it with itself, it's always greater or equal to zero. But that's great. That's a very complicated expression, and it's just weighted to be foiled out. So if you foil it out using the properties of dot products, you get u dot u plus u dot tv plus tv dot u dot u plus tv dot tv. It's better than watching tv. <laughs> you get that this is greater or equal to zero. And then just continue. What does that mean? u dot u. It's the same thing if you calculate this out. It's sum of ui squares, which is the, um, the square of the norm, plus T u dot v, so you just literally take this t out of it, and again we're dealing with real numbers, so we're okay. Would not be true for complex uh, inner product spaces, and then uh, t v dot u plus t squared length of v squared. Again, you take this t out, you take this v out, and you get v dot v, which becomes length of v squared that's greater or equal to zero. Last but not least, again, because we're working with real numbers, v dot u is just u dot v, so in the end you get u squared plus a t, 2t, u dot v plus t squared v squared, t 
greater than or equal to zero. So let's just rearrange this a little bit. So v squared t squared plus 2 u dot v t plus u squared is greater or equal to zero. And that's actually great. It looks very complicated. But if you think of u and v as frozen, this is actually just a quadratic equation in t. More precisely, if you let this to be a, this to be b, and this to be c, then all you get is a t squared plus b t plus c is greater or equal to zero. Okay, right. that's really great because we took this you know linear algebra slash analysis problem and we turned it into an algebra problem using polynomials. Okay, and here comes a crucial observation. Because recall from Algebra 2 or something, you have this discriminant, right? The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Right? And if you remember, again, from Algebra 2, there are three cases for that discriminant. If that discriminant is negative, it means that the polynomial doesn't have any roots. So it's either above the, uh, the x-axis the or it's below the x-axis. If the discriminant is equal to zero, it means that the, that the polynomial has exactly one root. So maybe it looks like that. Okay. Because, you know, uh, it's minus b over 2a. Okay. But if the discriminant is positive, then it has two roots. Right. Minus b plus or minus square root of the discriminant over 2a. Okay. But look, if we're in this case and the polynomial has two roots, it means that for sure somewhere it has to be the polynomial has to be negative. Because it has to cross the x-axis and it has to be negative somewhere. But this is not what we have here. We know that this polynomial is always non-negative. Which means that really this last case does not happen here, and we're either in the first case or the second case. So, one thing we know is that the discriminant has to be less than or equal to zero. So, hence, the discriminant is greater than less than or equal to zero. What does that mean? So, that's step three. This means that b squared minus 4ac is less than or equal to zero. So b squared is less than or equal to 4ac. But what is a, what is b, what is c? What is love? You know? <laughs> 2 u dot v squared is less than or equal to 4 u squared v squared. So in other words, 4 u dot v squared is less than or equal to 4 u squared v squared. Okay. Take this, you know, you can the four magically cancels out, and then one thing you can do is just take square roots on both sides, but square root of u dot v squared is an absolute value of u dot v, and square root of norm u squared times norm v squared, those things are non-negative, so this becomes u. And then we're done, and we can go home happy. Woo! Wow, I'm just a cameraman for the day. <laughs> no, 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 not cameraman. Let's make Professor Chow. <laughs>